So this month we are doing some vlogs on how to be a little bit more eco-friendly and sustainable because it's a pretty huge thing in the whole world right now. Like the whole world is dying because basically we use too much plastic, which is a bit sad. So I've got one of our fabulous students, Cassie, in because she is a bit of a queen on zero waste. And what, how, how do we start? Cassie, what are your top tips for just getting started for people that haven't really thought about it yet? Get ready a bit, why not? Bin line. Oh. I think that would be my number one because as soon as you take out your bin line, you go, what am I going to do with all the stuff that normally goes in my bin, right? So, you know, the let's call it the wet stuff. So, you know, your meat off parts, your fruit and veggie sprouts, that kind of stuff. The stuff that makes the bin ew. Yeah. Um, compost. Compost, grand fun. It doesn't have to be hard. Mukashi bin. Like, if you literally have no back garden, no anything, you live in, say, a flat in an apartment, I would go for Mukashi bin is the way to go. What is that? Um, it's like a little tub like this. I don't have one, so I don't know a lot about them, but it works the same as a compost in that you put your kitchen waste in. Um, and I believe it needs some kind of formula, juice, some kind of thing that speeds up the um, decomposing process and then you get beautiful stuff afterwards. Cool. Worm farms are also really great. People like love, love, love worm farms. They give you worm weed, they give you compost and they give you kids as well. Um, and they're quite compact. You can get some that are just like this size. Um, I have a compost and ever since I have my compost our waste is next to nothing because everything goes in there. Um, you are supposed to be a little bit careful with things like onion and citrus you're not supposed to put in there, dairy and meat you're not supposed to put in there. Um, if I have like a little tiny piece of like cup of meat or cheese, then it's chunky. It doesn't make that much difference. But you're not going to put like, the big massive fat rind in there. So you do have to be a little bit careful. Um, for those kinds of things, like if we're having a barbecue and we've got like meat leftovers, so it doesn't go stinky in the bin, I would wrap it in a newspaper and then chuck it in the bin. Or if you're a bit of a psycho like my mum, you can put it in the freezer until it's the night before bin day. And then, so then you get a bit of stink and then she chucks it in the bin like the night before in the morning or the morning before the going out. Um, so that would probably be the top one. The easiest ones are like, you know, your shopping bags, your veggie bags. Um, I go to this wonderful magical place called the Oasis Pantry. I absolutely adore it. Um, it's big in Greenwood, there's one in Mundaring, Bath and Dean. But there's places like this popping up all over the place. Um, it's a bulk food shop where you take your own containers, you weigh them, you write the weight, and then you fill all your containers with all the different products. They've got cleaning products, beauty products, all your staple pantry stuff. Um, I I have now moved from, like, every little thing is an achievement. So when I moved from buying red kidney beans in a tin to buying them dry and, you know, cooking up myself, I was like, I did a thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, bringing less stuff into the house. Whether, like, whether it's plastic, paper, cardboard, metal, whatever it is, just reducing the amount of shit you bring into your house. Literally shit. Yeah. I definitely need to get a compost. I've been wanting one for ages. Yeah. I have a bit of a bee in my bonnet about compost as well because they sell these like big plastic plastic tubs. <laughs> and I'm like, so we're buying more plastic to fix the plastic problem. Um, so luckily my film plays a tradie, so I just got him to get off cuts of wood from his work. Um, because it's like treated for moisture and everything and he just built a box which we divided into two. One side gets all juicy and lovely and composty um, while the other side has to fresh stuff into. Um, but you can just like put a bucket with the bottom um, cut out of it into a spot in the garden and just add stuff to that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be hard or expensive or time consuming or need a lot of space. Oh, that's so cool. So we need to go composting, get rid of bin liner, and then just yeah. it's buying something with the intention to solely throw it out. Yeah. I do not understand. What about the biodegradable ones? Have you seen them? I have seen them. There's some that are plant-based, which are great. Some of them 
See, there's not, it's a, quite a grey area between compostable, dark, biodegradable, um, uh, yes. Yeah, it might, might be biodegradable in you know in a hundred years, but they can still say that it's biodegradable. Um, like there's, I don't know the brand of the copy, but it's a Melbourne-made um, company that they make compostable, um, biodegradable coffee pods. And I had a couple of them float around my compost box for at least twelve months. Wow, biodegradable, compostable. What else is an easy swap for? for women to do, women in particular, because we mostly talk to women. And women seem to care more. Yeah, we do. Um, well, let's talk about the icky part of life, the thing that happens every month. Apparently, sanitary pads, tampons, everyone that has ever been made is still out there somewhere in the wild world. They don't break down, ever. It takes like, yeah, and they're still covered in <laughs> blood or whatever you put on them. Yeah. Um, so, number one, the best thing I have ever discovered, which I discovered right here at a Sweat or Sparkle um, Simon Dad's Open Day, the menstrual cup. Ah! Honestly, like the best thing that has ever happened for me, my body, and my period. It's like you don't even have your period, you can stay in there for 12 hours, it doesn't leak. You don't feel it, you can literally do everything apart from with it in. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's just amazing. And I you really use reusable um, like panty liners as well, yeah. you know, by the side where it's not heavy enough to use the cup. Um, people think they're a bit icky, but honestly, once you put them in the wash, you put them in your cold soak in the wash, they come out like so yeah. icky. Yeah. yeah, so I haven't had a period where I have thrown anything in the bin for a year, maybe more. That's awesome. Which is a lot of, thank you. Um, it's a lot of waste. Yeah. Um, it is saving. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to mention about your composting was your garden is freaking amazing now. That's because compost is like crack for plants. <laughs> it makes them <laughs> great. It makes them go nuts. I literally have to rip out pumpkin seedlings because pumpkins are growing like nobody's business in my garden. Anywhere I put compost, I get tomatoes and I get pumpkins. I yeah, have to rip yeah. it out. That's awesome. But I am going for pumpkins that I don't eat very well. Mm. Which I'm super proud of. I'm a pumpkin mum. You are a little pumpkin mama. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super proud of it. So lots of benefits to reducing your plastic, getting compost. I need to get onto that. Maybe that'll be this weekend's job. Oh, I brought some props as well. Oh, okay. So, kit, obviously, like, the kitchen is a place that we produce a lot of waste as well, and a lot of it's, like, wild drop and food storing. Yeah. Um, I have purchased some, like, silicon Ziploc bags. Super cool because my fiancé likes to use Ziploc bags. Um, but also these things, so you, if you haven't heard about these wax traps, you're probably living under an eco rock. But... <laughs> these are plastic rock. <laughs> yeah, plastic rock. I'm sure they exist. These are like the most amazing little things. Um, use them just like lard wrap to wrap pretty much everything except for meat. Nothing that needs to be like sterilized with hot water because you can't put them in hot water. Um, so if I cut apple, lemon, cheese, tomato, anything, you just wrap it up and you're like, oh, it doesn't fit right. And then you just get the heat of your hand and you mold it to any shape. Oh, that's cute. And then you just pull it apart. So cool. They're supposed to last about 12 months, um, but I have actually successfully refreshed um, some of these, just like grating beeswax over it and you put baking paper either side and um, iron it. This one has a few like cracks in it, I don't know if you can see on the camera there. Um, to fix that, there's nothing wrong with it, it just looks gross. To fix that, you just put it on baking paper in the oven, 100 degrees for two minutes, it redistributes the wax and it's like me. Wow. Yeah. That is um, cool. So realistically, probably more than the 12 months. This thing is food grade silicon. They come in a pack of four from Adrena. You can buy them at the Oasis Pantry or an amazing online store called Flora and Fauna. It's one of my favorite places. Um, it's a pack of four, it's about 20 to 25 bucks. You get two of these little boys and two big boys. You can use them to, again, um, yeah, they're stretchy. You can use them to cover bowls, glasses, um, 
you know, your fruit and veg as usual. You can bake on them. I've baked brownies on oh, my... Them. Yep. You can put them in the oven anywhere up to, I think it's about 220 degrees. Um, you can freeze them so they're super versatile. So they replace flour and our foil baking as well. Wow. Before, and then voila, we don't need glad wrap anymore. Good. So we got rid of glad wrap. We got rid of the bin liner. We've got crack for the plants. Uh, we can have a period into menstrual cups and the reusable panty liners. Mm -hmm. And if you have to buy plastic or any kind of packaging, because let's face it, it's inevitable. Like it's going to happen. Even I go through a lot of plastic, you know, mm -hmm. you, you crunchy plastic and that kind of stuff. I think the hardest thing is milk and meat. I'm going to try and do plastic free July, and that's the thing that I'm like brainstorming. How can I get around this? Um, my friends will be a butcher. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. You know, I've asked Woolies, you know, they won't get in my own containers, so you're, you're going to have to do like, you know, the local small places, which is fine. It's good. It's local. There is um, a brand called Grumpy Farmer. They do um, one litre milk glass bottles. You yeah, empty the bottle, you take it back to wherever you bought it, and they change it out. So that's my plan there. Um, but, it, you know, if it does have to come into your house, the question is then, what do you do with it? Um, most hard plastic can be recycled. Um, I'm still asking questions about this, you know, because you've got your numbers one to six. Um, some people say, oh, this six can't go in. I think most Chinese containers are fives. Um, but my lady at the Western Pantry shows me that all hard plastic can go in recycling. The lids cannot. You put a bottle with a lid on it, Coke bottle, milk bottle, whatever, it's not going to get recycled. It's going to change the around the and really, as a size that makes it to say this, the recycling bin is just the way to plant it still. Because plastic alone only has like so long that it can be recycled. So for most plastics, it's only like once or twice and then it's a And, you know, I think metal is like the only, metal and glass are the only things that can be recycled and recycled. Recycled, the soft plastic, the bin that is up behind yeah. Woolies and Coles. So I have about six bins in my house, to be honest. There's a compost bin, the recycling bin, the rubbish bin, which is a little bucket like this big, which we barely fill in a month. Um, there's a little pouch for um, bottle lids, the pumps out of like hand sanitizer pumps, um, hand soap, that kind of thing. There's a little pouch for um, alfoil, because if you get Take an Easter egg wrapper and throw that in the recycling. Yes, it's alcohol, so it can be recycled, but it's too small. So <laughs> I collect it until I've got enough to make, you know, maybe like a fist size, then wrap it all up in one big bit that's already in there and put it in the recycling. So there's a lot of nitty gritty to it. Um, yeah. But once you kind of got a system, I suppose it doesn't take too long. Exactly, yeah. And um, in August, we actually had guests. We had three of my fiance's cousins living in our house, and at the end of the week, the waste situation had not changed. There was no extra in the landfill bin. Everyone had put things where it should have been. It was so heartwarming for me. It's so cute. I know. I was like, "This all in your house rules so well." <laughs> so yeah, we'll have them back. Um, and I just wanted to mention as well, we do have a blog up on um, different items that you can use for your period, so like the reusable pads, um, and there's a few different products actually that we found on there, so we've got those up. And we also have a video up as well on how to insert your menstrual cup, because I know that's actually a big thing that puts people off, they're a little bit scared to use them because they're not sure how to get it in correctly, so <laughs> a question. Yeah. Does it include how to get it out? Someone had a very awkward experience <laughs> on her maiden journey. There is a tip on how to get it out as well. <laughs> it involves some help from my partner. <laughs> and that's story. why I'm marrying him. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cathy. It's okay. We're spreading the green.